Greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Fabian Say. Looking a little different. Um, you notice you notice that the, the we don't have the fancy intro and the music and all that stuff because my co-conspirator Damien Levy having laptop issues. So in fact this episode should have been the episode I'd recorded about Easter and Lent and giving up things for Easter. But Damien laptop, lap dog, I decided to say nah cooperate and nah fix till next week. <laughs> till Wednesday. So but I want to also get this episode out. And this episode is about my father. So my father died on Monday the 22nd of March um, as a result of COVID complications and even thinking about that just based on people's life experience and spiritual beliefs you know so, oh you lost your father they always make me giggle because no I didn't lose him I, I, we know exactly where he is <laughs> actually the term I use a lot with some people struggle with is made his transition and people say made his transition to what well to the next plane of existence so he's no longer existing on the earthly human plane his soul has ascended and ascended doesn't mean going to heaven his soul has left his body and so yeah so my formidable father winston atherton thomas was admitted to ue um with complications for two other illnesses so he was diabetic and because he was a bullbucker and dopey canker he was he was diagnosed two years ago and my father refused to take insulin or any other medication against the advice of his doctor and his family pleading he's like no 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 so like daddy look my mom cooks really healthy i tell you the healthiest food i eat um is when i go eat by my parents we well, said that that's not going to be enough so anyway his blood sugar was through the roof and then he had a prostate scare a few years ago and he was having a bleeding issue and so all those stuff actually normalized but then he tested positive for covid labored breathing so what um the cause of death is covid pneumonia and folks let me tell you it was rough here's a couple of things that, that 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 conspired to the roughness you know because of what i do as a trainer facilitator and i had a contract with southeast regional health authority for a couple of years doing training for them you get an inkling of what's going on in our healthcare, an inkling of some of the really ridiculous circumstances shortages you know just things not being in place you know, just, just bad. Well, COVID has come and popped down, mash up and fracture the whole situation. So it was rough. So, you know, we get there. Um, I have to, you know, thank you because we, we for all our difficulties, I, I'm going to say we, we got pretty good service from UE. You know, they got us out of the waiting area quickly because, it, because of the COVID. Um, we waited three or four hours to get a room, which was really rough because my father was in a lot of pain. Um, but the doctor, a doctor saw him three times, you know, came and saw him, did another COVID test, did the blood, sh blood sugar, gave him antibiotics. Just the wait for the room was really, really long. And daddy was in a lot of pain. He was complaining. It's, it's what, you know, you go through a lot of stuff. So I sat there, you know, in the tent with him and I was thinking, okay, so Holy Spirit, ancestors, News is, me know say, you know, say, is a writer, and I know at some point I'm going to write about this, but I'm going to dash a whole heap of information for me one time. Take time now, take time. I want to feel bombarded with so much things at once. <laughs> I remember having that thought. And, you know, you, you are struck by the fact that, and this isn't necessarily new, because my father, you know, as, as your parents get old, they get smaller, and they get smaller and diminish physically, and mentally but they also get smaller in your consciousness in your awareness of them as beings you know when you're kids sometimes your parents are giants and part of our life journey is they get smaller and smaller and so daddy was in a lot of pain he was complaining about the chair and he wanted me to check in and we kept saying daddy we just have to wait <laughs> at one part my father grabbed him phone at quarter to ten to call his doctor his person to ask the man if he can come down to you him to get him a more comfortable chair and i'm like dr scott we apologize for you getting this call from my demanding high maintenance father and i sat there and you know in the moments of pain and discomfort i was really relieved when he he nodded off but we had three or four lucid conversations um a couple of them were things that we've talked about before and i'm sharing some of that stuff later and yeah this is gonna be you know, I also thought 
that I'm really glad I had an idea to write a book about my parents' ex England experience. So they met in England and then they had me and they came to back to Jamaica when I was seven. And I want to write about that, not just that experience, but how I was raised as this fierce, proud Jamaican black boy who my father wanted me to know that we're not from England, they don't want us here and we don't want to be here. And we are go back to we had, which they did. So I, I, I did interviews with him and my mom on Skype um, and they were hysterical. Um, it was so funny, like, not sweet God, no man, what are you talking about? Do, do, do. And I said, um, hello, hello, pay attention to the interviewer. <laughs> but I'm glad because I didn't know he was going to leave us so quickly. So I now have that information. And then this third book, my third book, so I have one self-published book. I have a manuscript of spoken word with publishers now. And then this third book, Jump the Line. Um, and the working title is chapter and verse, and it's memories and moments from my life. So the jump the line, because I would have been working on that book with my parents, but I'm really glad I did those interviews because daddy has a better recall than mommy. And so I did them to notes. So thank spirit and ancestors for that because he'd be gone. And of course, this now means that there's going to be at least one additional chapter in the book because, you know, my father dying is a major milestone moment or memory. Things that hit you, you know, so... First of all, there's the, the grim aftermath of the, the nitty gritty of the things you need to do. You know, funeral home, death certificate, all that stuff. So that's, that stuff has come together pretty quickly. But it's just like, you're like, okay, so, so emotionally dealing with that and, and, and you're pressing through and pushing on. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been rough, but not so rough. I, I, I shared in a, in, a, in a post online that the my family is the Thomas practicality and fortitude, you know, rose. We've moved into action mode. We supported each other emotionally. My mom is a superstar. She is just shining and dealing with her pain and her grief, but being very practical and saying, boy, you know, we have to press on. One of my favorite things is, so we were doing conference calls for the doctor's updates when we, when we got them. And those took a while for us to get those from you. And that was distressing. I'll touch on that a little later. And when the doctor called me back after the update on, on, on Monday afternoon, the 22nd, she called me back like in 15 or 20 minutes to say, and, you know, check with me, are you alone? Are you sitting? Da, da, da. She have not so, so, not so good news. And she told me what had happened and that they pronounced my father dead. And so I called my sisters and I said, okay, so, me not think say, if you tell a lady, say her husband dead, is a conference call. Let me mask up, sanitize up, go to the house because of course my mom is done in quarantine because she lived with my father da, da. and um, so we went, um, called my sisters told her, my mom kind of went oh, send so God, and she leaned back in the sofa, we sat there for a while and she said alright, well he's no longer suffering da, da, da. so we went through the who calling who tonight, who will be called tomorrow, so my sisters got calling some of the family in England my mom and I making some calls here. Da, da, da. So I said to her, I can stay. And I didn't come prepared to stay, but I can stay. She said, no, man, all right. Da, 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 da. So, okay. So I head back home. So, of course, you know, in that night, you now lots of family and friends are calling. And apparently, so several of them said, so, you stay in the house? You stay in the house by yourself? Da, da. My mom's response was, so, where we must go? Where we must sleep? I'm not afraid of my husband. The man we married for how many years? I'm not afraid of 15 or spirit. And I thought... Yes, mother, mother dearest, superstar. <laughs> She's like, when, when we must sleep, me not afraid of my husband. Um, the next morning we call her, she check in, she say, I'm up, I feel the dogs, you know, I feel your father's spirit with me. Um, he's no longer suffering. We just need to do what we need to do to get through this and support each other. And that's been, you know, where she is, you know, so... This woman married to this man for 50 plus years. So that's the whole other thing we have to now look at and deal with now, you know. Um, she clearly can't live by herself. So as a family, we have to figure that out, what this life change for all of us looks like. Um, in processing and thinking and going through my own, and I find I'm writing a lot, because you know, the writer in me. One of the things that hit me that I'm really grateful for is I'm the firstborn. Um, I was the last one to see my father alive. Because my mom was in the waiting area. I was on the inside in the tent with him. Um, and literally when they took him to the emergency, the isolation unit that night, I was, I'm the last one. I spent that last three, four hours with him. And that 
is a blessing and a gift, but it also has weight. It's heavy. In the covidity of it all, and I gotta bless up Emma Lewis. Emma says I must claim and copyright this term because she's never heard anybody that's using covidity. You know, of course, my father died alone. We we couldn't get to see him. We couldn't visit him. Of course, there's no contact. Um, so that was hard. So when he, and my father's high maintenance, he was calling us like complaining about every little thing. And then when he started to worsen, you know, he was calling my sisters a lot, and something wasn't coherent, and that was difficult because there's nothing you can do. And so we wish he had not died alone. We wish we'd been able to be there to gather around him. You know, my sisters are in England, so it would have been me. Um, but you know, the COVIDity just did not allow that. You know, in addition to this, you know, this, this, the COVID is, it's rough because it's separating us. You know, you're telling your yard and all this stuff. And, you know, and we have to acknowledge that staying at home is not safe for everybody. But it's, it's one of my friends, you know, she was trying to get somebody to play a voice note for her colleague's one-year-old child who has COVID because that's the only way he'll get to hear his mother's voice. It's rough, you know, I want to, you know, in Jamaica, the healthcare, you know, when on a critical ward, there's like, you know, one nurse to 10 patients. It's insane, you know, people, patients mess up themselves and have to sit in it for two hours because the nurse just cannot get to you. In my father's case, they wanted to move him to ICU, I'm going to say, at least two or three days before he died. There was no space in ICU. When, when Dennis there, the, the, the COVID drug, there's none of it at the UE pharmacy. You know, would my father possibly live longer? We don't know. These are some of the things So I want to, and when Dr. Fletcher, you know, gave me the, 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 the information about my father dying, I said to her, I also just want to pause and thank you. I want to thank you for your grace, for your charm, for your work, for, for, for wading through this difficulty. You know, me and my family want to thank you. Um, I said, please pass it on to the Ward 8 nurses for me because we may not get to do that. Because let me tell you, as, mo as difficult as it is, as annoying and dehumanizing as it is, you know, our healthcare workers are pushing through this and dealing with this every day, hundreds of admissions a day. In one hospital I know in in, um, in Maypen, they had to convert um, the, what was a, a nurses and doctors lounge into an area for patients. They're being inundated with people. We system did pop down before, and COVID come and just got a whoop, crazy. So I worry for our nation, you know, above and beyond COVID, because if your healthcare don't work, with education system not that good, crime and violence and corruption are out of control. Whoa, my people, we have Wolipa work for do, and what does that work look like? You know, how do we show up? What can we do? Um, so amidst all that, you know, just there's a lot going on, but we're pushing through. Um, I have to share, you know, <laughs> so I called Sam Isaacs, you know, at home, and the lady goes, whoa, hello. And I was putting on my headphones, so she said, when she said hello the first time, I didn't answer. And she said, hello. And I said, hello, how are you doing? And she said, I'm tired, I'm busy, and I want to go home. <laughs> I was like, oh. So I said, okay, then I release you of the obligation of taking my call. Go on home, yeah. And I hung up. Annoyed. Posted on social media. And quite a few people said, you know, including our close colleague of mine, Carmen Clark, said, boy, that's not the Sam Isaac's way at all. At all, at all, at all. I'm going to give the managing director your number. He's going to call you. And several other people came to the defense. And I thought, it's a good thing when you're your business. People know you and know your business and your brand. And he called me, Gordon Chuck. He called me that same night. He said, I hope this is not too late. And he called me and he apologized. And then he said, if it's not too late, I know it's a rough time for you. Can you tell me what information you needed from us? So I told him. He gave me the information on the quote over the phone. Then he said, I'll call you back in the morning. And he has called and stayed with us ever since. Um, my father's body is now at Sam Isaac's. Um, and funny about the circle of life. So my brethren and colleague Ian McKnight called me to say, Fabian, you know, God, you know, God was a little boy running up and down at Jamaica Aid Support. He wasn't Jamaica's Aid Support for life yet. Because Sam Isaacs was the only funeral home that would take bodies of people living with HIV that had died from AIDS complications. And I used to work at Jazz when we had Osborne Road and we had the only AIDS hospice in Jamaica. So Ian said, you know, God, you probably don't remember him, but he used to come there with him family or with him father and be running up and down the place. And I said that to Mr. Chuck and I said, wow, look at life, look at the circle of life. I have to big up Gordon Chuck. He is a gentleman. 
he he's taken care of things he's sorted out when he went to yui to get the body because they told us yes you know you can come for the body now yui send the father body gone at jones funeral home didn't tell us <laughs> So Mr. Chuck said, you know, it's no problem. We'll get him first thing in the morning. As soon as we get the body, we'll call you. And he did that. So I want to big up Gordon Chuck. Um, and anybody who has to deal with the difficulty of a death and handling those details, I highly recommend Sam Isaac's son, son funeral home. <laughs> we also talked about the lady who did wrote to me. And I said to him, I said, you know, I said, but you understand that she represent you. We, we were also juggling thinking, did she think she was talking to a colleague? So maybe we'll find that out. But I also said, we come to some training, for, you know. Um, and but not just customer service training, which is one of my favorite areas of training, but also emotional intelligence and how do you balance dealing with customers or the public when you are under pressure, when you're hurting, when your heart are hurting, and when you're having a pandemic, how do you rise above all that? So my father has died um, a colleague of mine said you've, you've joined the club the club of parents who have, um, people who have either lost a parent or both parents um, I'm grateful I'm grateful I'm grateful that my particular path and my journey has led me to know and believe and acknowledge that my father has left this plane of life that what we have are the memories of his life the good, the bad, and different because my father was many things um, and as some of you would know you know, I'm really blessed and happy that we mended our relationship before he died. Because in my earlier days, I were not to be featuring the man, none time. <laughs> so we have taken a journey to healing. And there's a story I've written about him that's going to be in, the, in the, the new book as well. And then, you know, then this chapter around him departing. So this episode is to honor the memory of my father, Winston Atherton Thomas. Um, who left this earthly plane on March 22nd. And the anniversary coming up soon, and we have to figure out what we're going to do to celebrate that way with Mummy, who is here. Um, so big love and thanks to any and everybody who has sent wishes, well wishes, checked in with us. Thank you so much. Um, Dervan Malcolm, thank you, brethren. Dervan did a, what my father called Dervan show all the time. Dervan, my father, a big, big friend. <laughs> so Dervan did a tribute to my father. He played one of the many calls that my father made to the show and then acknowledged his passing as well. Um, so, my people, here's another lesson that I've learned. And it's not a new lesson. I try to live this way. People who you love, tell them say you love them. Tell people you love them all the time for no particular reason. Um, sometimes the petty things that seem all so important when you have people around really aren't important. Leg off of some things. Put on some burden and some baggage. Forgive people we need to forgive. Forgive yourself. Love is our superpower. It really is. Um, and I am so grateful and so blessed for the relationship I had with my, my father, the good, the bad, the in-between, but also the fact that we healed and got to a point where he would call and check on me, was in big son, I got to see my father demonstrative and emotional, all of that. Um, I got to see him weak and vulnerable and some of it made me uncomfortable, it was hard, but I'm glad that I was there for that, um, that I was able to hold him and walk with him and carry him to the bathroom, all of that, the messy stuff. Um, because he's no longer here physically, but he will always be here with us. Um, big up on yourself. Take care. Walk good. Be safe, my people. Be safe. If you don't hear me joke in the COVID denied with him, I come be me here. <laughs> Let me just say. Blessings, love, and light. Take care.